So yeah. We need an actual Ziuna. cameraman, but we'll get that after. We'll show you what they're feeding the neighbors, Two hours from now, yeah. Locals. We get raw hot dogs. Amazing. What they're giving the... The attitude arrow was better. All right, quiet down over there. Gone. If you're up there, just once let Daigo defeat Kazunoko. There he is. He's in the chat. All right. Magic Man himself. Man, Guile down jab anti air is jank. I can't believe how good it is. It could have been Tan Man. Tan Man could have done it if he wanted to. To be making those esports books. Uh, no pants has helped me out in the past, but he, um, I think he's too busy to do it alone. Wow, what a dive kick. This guy, Kazunoko, has the best dive kicks. There's no one with better dive kicks. Especially a character like Gao, who is anti-air is so good. That's good spacing. So, this is a very important thing about the guile Kami matchup. I think Guile has to throw booms at a certain range. Because, uh, here's the deal. As Guile, if you throw a boom at a little closer than this, like right about here, where Gu if Guile was like right about there, right, then that's perfect range because if she EX drills it, she'll side switch. Right? So you want her to hit the EX drill because if you guys don't know, EX drill oftentimes will go through you and she'll end up behind. You want to throw the booms at a range where that will happen. Because if you stay where Daigo is, when the EX drill hits, he maintains the corner positioning. That's bad. You don't want that. You want her to go through you. So you want to throw the booms right about there. This range is good. But when he creates a little bit more distance, like right here, this is the bad range where she can stay in the front. You'll, we'll probably see it in the set, but it's worthwhile to throw them at a range where that happens. Oh, shit. Oh, well, you know, it happens to everybody. Cami versus Guile is hard for Guile. I think it, yeah, I think it can be difficult, but I also think that, yeah, Kazunoko actually tried to beat that. I also think that uh, it can snowball in Guile's favor if you're not careful. Yeah, he's fishing. So the roundhouses, this is an interesting matchup. There's a lot going on. The roundhouses from Kazunoko are to beat Sonic Boom. If Guile throws a Sonic Boom, uh, the way fighting games work is that his hurt box will be extended. So when you throw a projectile, your hurt box gets extended further than it normally is. So like his hit box right now, you know, or his hurt box is like where he is. But when he throws the boom, it extends his hurt box forward. And so what Kazunoko is trying to do is swing the roundhouse into the extended hurt box where he will be if he throws a boom. It's something you'll see from him a lot. It'll crush counter the boom on startup and he gets a combo. That's why he fishes with the roundhouse at Sonic Boom range. Yeah, when he throws a boom, next time he throws a boom, I'll show you guys. Wow, what a confirm. That was wild. So when he throws this boom, his hurt box gets extended. Uh, it's not where the boom is or where his arms are. It's like more like out here. His, his hurt box gets extended further. So you can actually hit Guile further than normal. This range sucks for Kami. Yeah, it's hard. He can react. Oh, he's too late. Yeah, it's so right there. That range is so hard. It's so hard to not get flash kick. On the same screen, you think you're playing Rainbow Edition with a no charge. Round two from Daigo, but unfortunately. Yeah, that's what he tried to do last round. That that's the bait flash kick, right? So he jumps in the air and does shallow dive kick because if he flash kicks, this will make this whiff and he can get a punish. Yeah, he missed it, but no punish. You hear fucking Giuda? Yes. Almost meterless. Ah, there, finds his mark. Can't combo from that high. Nice work. That's what we saw Fudo do as well, right? Uh, to beat throw, right? You Almost see this? Meterless. This little thing right here? Walk back fierce. That's sick. No, we missed his flash kick. Man, Juna and Z are losing it. Wow, how did he wait that long? Fucking... Z and Juna. <laughs> they're, they're like, no! Daigo, please! Every time he gets hit. That's so funny. That's fine. You'll take that. If you're Daigo... Oh, he, he probably read backdash. Uh, I imagine that right here, this is a backdash route. 
He expects Daigo to create space by backdashing, so he drills it. Okay, that's a perfect shot. Yeah, nice sweep. That's all he they are definitely the most biased the commentators. It's well. hilarious. He has the advantage in resources, but this is Kami. Jab, jab, jab. He's just taunting. Oh, yeah, you, you always want to eat the throw against Kami because it doesn't lead to anything. Good oh, confirm. EX. Yeah. We have yet to see Ume flash kick. EX can go through this. EX can uh, drill. Ah! Can go through it just like that. Yeah, bias commentary, you have to know what you're doing, you know what I mean? Like, if you're brand new, you can't just get on the mic and be like, I fucking love this guy. Everybody's gonna be like, who is this, you know? Uh, it's only certain players. Yeah, Daigo has built up this this reputation as, like, everybody's favorite Lord Daigo, you know, all this shit. So, being biased for Daigo is, like, probably fair play, especially if you're Z and Juna. But most people shouldn't take it as a good... If you're a commentator and you hear this, you're like, you can't just be like, all right, now I know what to do. It's hard. There's a lot that goes into commentary. Ah, nice work. Stun. Flash kick repa. He did five in a row, right? Five in a row. Yeah, as a new commentator, it's hard. You have to be careful about copying people. You know when you get on commentary as a new commentator, you don't know exactly what your style is yet, and so it's hard not to repeat the things you've heard from other commentators. Like if you ever listen to Tekken commentary, uh, and you hear like, boom, final, final round, I'm just like, uh, that sounds familiar. Oh shit. That's a lot of damage. That was, uh, that was really low to the ground. I'm surprised that he was able to cancel into the CA. If you guys don't know, there's a range where, where you actually cannot land, uh, the CA off of a, f a flash kick. Like, you're too far to cancel into it. If you hit with the tail end of the flash kick, then it's not possible. I'm surprised that he was able to at that range. Uh, he did that earlier, too. The same back fierce. Other, other people will copy them. They'll also copy yipes. Every time they get a hit, they'll they'll say yipes phrases and stuff, or uh, Eris. You wish Alex could do something like that? Look, you're just... You're wishing Alex could do a lot of things. Oh, you try to throw bait? Whoa! I hate... I hate his stupid down jab. Hate it. Hate it. Why does it... Why does it anti-air? His down jab is a really good anti -air. Yeah, his face. He's like, are you kidding me? Was he crouch walking? I didn't see it. These guys are no. Oh, where, where was the flash kick? What's for breakfast? Lumberjack slam. Okazumi. Can you link in here? Yeah, if it's not something you silly. Use your best judgment. If it's something that I would angrily stroke my hair at, don't put it on. Oh, shit. Yeah, you can't combo from that. Dive kick is too high. I like Daigo's use of down medium kick. I think that that's one of Guile's most important buttons. Lots of people use four medium kick a ton, and it's super good. Shit, that did a lot of damage. Oh yeah, the Tokido link. This is a great. This is a great link, dude. That's the funniest thing I've ever read. That's actually one of my favorite things I've ever read. This link, because all right, let me find it. Um, let me think. Hi, this is Jacob Wolf with ESPN Esports and the Undefeated. I'm here Damn with it, the Jacob Wolf. Street Fighter. All right. All right. Here's here's Tokido's interview. This is a super great interview, by the way, if you haven't read it. All right. Here it is. So here's why Tokido doesn't think he is the best fighting game player of all time. He says, "If aliens invade the Earth from the fighting game planet." If they win, we lose fighting games. We cannot play fighting games anymore. Only one player can fight as a representative of Earth. Who do you vote for? And Tokido says the only person who could represent the Earth in fighting games is Daigo. And he says until Tokido can say that he is that person, he will never consider himself the best. This is actually like the most fascinating article I've ever read. That analogy is bonkers. He's like, yeah, if the aliens come from the fighting game planet, right? And they're, they demand to play us in fighting games. And only one human being can represent us. Who will it be? And everybody's like, it's got to be Daigo. 
Like, that's the one, right? But I think it has to be Tokido. I would pick Tokido because what if they pick, like, Tekken 5? Daigo is not going to play Tekken 5, right? What if they pick, like, some random game that Daigo has never played or something or some new game? Daigo takes a while to get ready. But you have to pick Daigo. But if you're talking about who's going to win, Tokido has played so many games and won at so many games, right? He's good at hella games. You would pick Fudo. Fudo's also a good choice. Like, you have to pick Daigo just because he's Daigo. But it's so hard. It's such a hard choice. This sounds like the plot for Space Jam. Dude, I know. We wrote out a script for Space Jam where the uh, aliens come down and the five uh, players for the U.S. team is the five Japanese gods. And, like... <laughs> It's like hella tight. We like talked through the script of the Japanese fighting game gods versus the aliens, Space Jam, uh, Earth versus the fighting game planet aliens. It was like, it was so good, dude. Oh my god, it was hella tight. It's a real thing. We wrote it. It's it's already done. I have it. Yes, that is the power of anyway, back to Daigo with the hot dog. Man, Daigo is just committed to throwing fireballs. I feel like... Oh, yeah. I hate... It. There's so many moves like this in this game. They're so powerful. Uh, we talked about this last time we watched Kami, right? Her roundhouse is so good because it recovers instantly. He tried to counter poke it, and he just gets counter hit. It's so good, and it crush counters if you attack or something like that. Dang, what a flash kick. That's the first one we've seen another one. Universal hits, a white light building up, and there it goes. Daigo V-Trigger. It's not that threatening until he builds the rest of C8. Now it's pretty threatening. Daigo is fully stocked now. He can take this round. It's super hard to punish. Ryu has it. She has it. Yeah, so right there, he couldn't cancel into CA. This is what I'm talking about. He can't do CA off this flash kick because it hits so high in the air. Because it's all the way up here, uh, you are not on the ground anymore, so you can't cancel into critical arc. Yeah, the end of the script is definitely Michael Jordan dunking over an alien. You're right. Stand like kick CA. Do it. Oh, he's dead. If he wants to spend it, will he do it? He does. He does. I feel like that was a mistake. He definitely could have done EX in the kill. We saw him mess up yesterday. You can see Cosmo go burn now. He recognizes Daigo made a mistake. Gave up all of his meter for this. Yeah, Ibuki's roundhouse does it too. Yeah, that's another character. Ryu, Kami, Ibuki, Vega. To make sure that they're dead because we have that psychological fear that the same thing. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Another one. That was crazy. What is this crotch walk? Nice. Kazanuk messed up his strike. Daigo was ready with the flash kick. Takes the life advantage in the start, but still at a meter disadvantage. Oh, we can't combo at that range. That was a good back, uh, back light kick, though. Activates. He wants to be able to do two of these this round. Nice. He tried to dive kick anyway, so it would have... Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> these two guys are so funny on commentary when Daigo's playing. Oh, my... Double dash four, time to guess. Nah. Oh, <laughs> oh his face. <laughs> what do I think of Ziyuna's blatant DDR bias during commentary? It's pretty hilarious. I can see that if you're not a fan, you might not like it. I thought it was really funny. Not all commentary has to be the same, you know? Everyone on YouTube was so salty about their commentary. Really? To be fair, uh, YouTube is always salty. Wow, down jab didn't work right there, huh? Maybe he expected a dive kick. Yeah, he tried down jab anti. -air. I thought it was funny. A lot of people will not like it, but people, it's very, sub commentary is very subjective, you know? Some people will love Steve and hate me. Some people will uh, love me and hate Steve, and it's just like, I mean, it is what it is, right? That's just how commentary goes. Some people are like, yeah, this guy's the best in the world. And then some other guy's like, I can't even stand to listen to him for 10 seconds. You know? It's like, what can you do? And match point, Daigo looks like he's on tilt. Yeah, have you ever, you ever watch NLBC and the chat's like, what are these casters doing? And I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> it's really funny. People are, you know, they're sensitive and they like what they like, right? To be honest with you, I really dislike uh, the generic esports-y commentator sound that a lot of people have. 
You know what I'm talking about? You've ever, if you've ever heard it, I really dislike some esports, com like the generic esports commentator sound. I dislike. I think it's too manufactured, and everybody sounds the same doing it. I don't dislike it. That was good work. He's still on the ground, so he can do it. Whoa. I didn't think that was gonna kill. Fuck. I think there's lots of super good esports commentators, right? At the top end. But at like a B level, there's a ton of people who just do that generic esports sound, and it's not good. Hey, we talked about this range earlier. Remember when I said that there's a range where EX goes through Guile? This is the range where you want to throw booms. Because she loses her positioning. She put, she gave Guile more screen space to work with. So, right? So, Guile now has more screen space to work with, and he lost the corner. See? Every time he does that. It's one bar for low damage. You'll take it as long as she side switches. Yeah, I don't like the normal esports -y commentary sound. Like, you know, when they're watching a match, they're like, alright, we're into the final round here. There's 68 seconds on the clock. Daigo Umohara, he survives the flurry, he's in the corner, a flash kick, he's trying to create space now, this is the championships of the universe, can he do it, Kazunoko, he's moving, and it's just like, I'm like, what are you doing, like, you're just, they all sound the same, it's like this super, like, uh, f like, it's just like, I don't know, it's this just floaty, kind of air airless way of that they go about the commentary and it's just like man what is even happening right there's no personality in it it's just real bland it's just kind of dry it's play by play that's not really filling in anything right i just i don't like that sound i think it's real bad i think that there are people who are great at that noise and i like it but there are, are too many of people doing that you know but commentary is very subjective, so who knows? Yeah, fighting games are very different. The commentators all sound so different from each other, right? They're, like, that's the thing. Yeah, did you hear the uh, the CSGO commentator that did PUBG the other weekend? She was excellent. Was, she was super good. I want to do PUBG so bad, man. I realized that in the last four months, I have played 400 or 200 hours of PUBG. Uh, oh, shit. Is he dead? He's dead, right? Because it's Tempest? Yeah. Pansy. Yeah, she did excellent. The thing is, uh, the thing is, is that uh, I, I realized that in the last two mo four months since PUBG came out, around traveling, like, probably 20 weekends or whatever craziness, like, I probably traveled 15 of the last 20 weekends, right? I've played uh, 200 hours of PUBG. Since Street Fighter V has come out on Steam, I've played 230 hours, I realize. Not that I dislike Street Fighter, obviously, because I wouldn't play it and watch it every single day. I play it offline a ton. But I just play a shit ton of PUBG. <laughs> Yeah, Vicky Kitty did Smash. She did the uh, Evo uh, ESPN or Disney XD. No, I mean, not as uh, playable at. Oh, that was supposed to be a flash kick. At, uh, what is it? 3 p.m. PST, so not, not for a little while. Mm, maybe if he did a jump back roundhouse, that would have comboed. Oh. I'm surprised you didn't interrupt that. Mm, good work. <laughs> Did you hear? Fuck. <gasps> yes! He's clapping? You can hear him clapping? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I love. I love this commentary. Yeah, Steve and I have done two CPT top eights for an NA. It's just there's a rotation. There's like a five man uh, group that's on CPT that constantly does it. It's hard not to have repeats. Uh oh. Good. Yeah, Daigo's willing to take the throw. The pressure after is not that bad. Oh, wait, not. Good combo. He could have actually maybe gotten target combo. I don't know if he's close enough. 
Gotta frame trap that. He's not dead. Even with the X. Oh, that's the combo you wanted to use. Can he burn through the wall? What? Out of range. Oh! Fuck! I can't believe he did it, dude. I can't believe he did it. I mean, it's Daigo, so of course he did it. But I can't believe he did it. I can't believe he did it. He's got his own fucking name on the back and everything. Daigo, the beast. My beast shirt definitely doesn't have that on the back. <laughs> have you ever seen anybody that that invested in a match in their life? <laughs> this commentary was hilarious. Look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> yes. Yes, that should be Juna DDR. Check out that fucking flash kick again, though. We should watch it again. Oh, that's the combo you wanted to use? Kill. Can he burn through the wall? Look at oh, this. What? He just is like, all right. Boom! He just lets that shit shit rip. He's got it cocked and loaded. He's not, he's got it on the hip. He's got it on the hip. He's reaching down. Look at like all that happens is that Kazunoko takes a step forward. Boom! <laughs> he just waits until he walks forward. There's no way you block right there. <laughs> you see that head tilt? You see the head tilt? That was pretty good. You're watching him slow -mo. Oh, he's like, you son of a head tilt. All right, camera's on me. I got to keep it esports. Take the headphones off. Try to be cool about it. Shake his hand. Right Pretend I'm not pissed. Can he burn through the wall? It sounds like Z got hit in the chest by a crossbow. <laughs> I hadn't even realized like the first two times what that noise was. I thought there was a fucking... I don't even know. I... <laughs> ah! He just screams. <laughs> that was hella funny.